All right, so this is kind of scary. So I definitely need to uh, take this and put a, a lock on it and reinforce this, of course, because this is just 3 16 It's what I had on the plasma table, but it works. Uh, basically, I tighten it down, take an 18 mil wrench and a piece of just rod stock, and then we can unscrew the jam nut the only thing I'm trying to do is just take the shock off and I'll probably leave it off this exact one uh, for testing. Yeah, it worked though. Very dangerous. Okay. Oh yeah, there we go. There we go. This was just to get me by. They actually sell a spring set up on Amazon to pull springs at want to be getting because I can't even build it for what they're selling it for and it's a pretty sweet little setup but this will allow me to not ruin a shock and and to be able to take shocks apart to get the springs powder coated because every build's not going to be red and black so it'd be nice to do that so uh yeah if I just reinforce this plate put a lock on it so it can't kick off it would have uh, worked even better but this should work for these big shocks from Go Power Sports as well as the small ones. <laughs> now the tricky thing's gonna be. So we're just sliding the spring off and then threading this right back on. We can actually take it out of this setup now. Lord be with us. Hey, the Harbor Freight Hercules stuff is actually pretty sick. I had to make a bolt out of all thread, 19 inches long. Two of them. So. Oh, shoot. I'm pressing it, but <laughs> springs will go flying. <laughs> Son of a gun. <laughs> Woo! Not for the faint of heart. Now we don't need any of these. Well, we kind of do because we don't know. We need to make sure we leave room for the girth of the shock. But we did what we was trying to do. All right. So, 300cc shock pulled apart. This is it at its full extended height uh, without the eyelet. I'm going to clamp this in the vise now, screw this on, and then we can go to mount our rear shock so we can get the buggy off the table and start finishing that thing up. So we're gonna put the front, and we don't have, we accidentally got the wrong shots from Go Power Sports. That is the correct one. This one's about an inch shorter. You can see the height different, but we don't have it. So these are the same brand wheels we put on the Seaman Buggy and Lonnie's uh, Deuce. 
and they're really nice. These are the bronze ones. These are the LeBron series. Mm -hmm. LeBron. The air wish he was Jordan's. Ah. Look like my Ackerman angle's pretty decent. I'm curious why I'm only just tightening that. How bad the angle is. That's how bad the angle would be if I didn't modify the spindles a little bit more. And it's got no reverse, so you need more steering than that. You need all the steering. That's all. Steer's real nice though. I mean, just smooth as butter. <laughs> I mean, you can't even tell that. Can you put lug nuts on the hurricane? I'm going to slide it so far forward until the back's about to come off the table, like where the A-arm is about right here. And then we're going to take our motorcycle lift, which we might as well go ahead and slide all the way Under against it. And then we're going to jack up the motorcycle lift. So the back just falls right on it. Then we can put the shocks on in the place and the back tires are starting to look pretty sick. These shocks I do not think is gonna work in this position. And these are very weak shock mounts. These are not gonna stay like this. We was gonna box them and then brace them off of this. I don't like them at all. So I had to trim them so much, but I think we're gonna have to stand this shock up more to get enough tension out of it to make it stiff enough. If we do that, then I can cut these off and just recreate a shock mount that uses both of these tubes. So the impact is going into two tubes. Right now, these would rip off in a hard off-road. Uh, you'll have to push that thing along. Wow, the table hasn't been empty in so long. I'm going third from the inside and then wherever it lines up, which is third from the inside. Yeah, maybe. Let's go. Okay, actually. Come on, baby. Yeah, so this is gonna hit just like I was afraid of. Mm. You see what I'm talking about? Yeah. Fine. Whew. Let's see what that'll do. Unless you go to the second one, it won't. He's at the end line. Oh, he's at the very end. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. yeah, not where it's gonna be. Of course. Actually, it'll be pretty close to. If we could have spaced these out even more and did spacers, which was my original plan, if you remember, I was mm -hmm. gonna do spacer washers. But the problem with this is, is it, like this is fine. It'll only get better as it squats. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. The clearance between this, but it is unfortunate. Uh, I'm gonna have to figure out something with that. Don't know quite yet what. And we don't know where the shock's gonna wanna be. But this will give us a ton of up travel, but I'd rather have drop, more drop to it than anything. Looks like the go-kart from Toy Story. Mm -hmm. If you get back and look at it. All right, will you lower that, Lonnie? I'm dying to see these wheels on it. Let's 
the, the front soft, I can tell you. Mm -hmm. Real soft. Look how tiny it is. It looks so huge up on the table. Those, the back will be raised quite a bit. It looks like a little dune buggy. The front's not horrible. I just wish that longer shots, you know? Because that's maxing it out there on travel. And that's up. Well, that's up for that side. This side actually has more. So it needs definitely longer travel for sure. Look how tiny it is though. <laughs> like it looks so huge up on the table. They always do. And it's just. <laughs> it looks perfect. So oh, I want to see what the back side. For a one seater, it's still wide. See, if we find out where we want them, then I can trim those, uh, the lower mounts. Up's fine. The upper is because the way this is built. But, I mean, it feels... Yeah, I'm the hand snorter. <laughs> we got to go in the end. <laughs> it's going to be way higher than this, though. I can tell you that. Yeah. Well, the, the back ones won't be at the far end. They'll be in more. Pull yeah. it up. Yeah, we just gotta. Yeah. So, if this is on the second one and that, if we move that two back and put that in the center, put this all the way to the back, it would raise it up a lot. But it also stiffened it a lot, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It is so tiny though. I didn't think it'd be this small, which is cool. Like it's not too wide. The I think it's the perfect size. Yeah, I do too. If anything, the cab could be a little narrower. Well, there'll be battery boxes and everything in yeah. there. Um, shifter and all that junk. Well, it went from a two-seater to a one-seater is why. Well, one and a half to one three-quarter seater. No, we fit in there pretty decent back then. Yeah, it was two-seater. This is the same one that burnt. No burnt daddy. So, not the same one. That not the same right. chest. <laughs> well, no, someone fixed it back up. Yeah, she's finally on the ground. Will she ever move? We don't know. <laughs> Let's do one thing at a time. I think the back actually feels good if it was just Tall. um, taller. Yeah. It looks sturdy. That's for sure. Yeah, it barely moves with me. Which, if we make the top go out, make it softer mm -hmm. no, no no sorry bottom go in we'll make it softer but we got clearance it all right so the buggy's on the ground and it's looking freaking sweet i think these wheels really look good on it everything turned out awesome so i am going to remake some new front shock mounts and i'm going to get the matching shock of course for the opposite side and all i'm going to do is stand the shock further up i'm probably going to go about out here and tack something in test it and then if it needs to go further probably like three inches out on this and i think that'll fix our problem on the rear it's just that body of the shock is touching i'm going to figure out what i need to do to get that to clear the shock needs to be closer in it's a little too stiff there's still a lot of weight that's going to be added to oil tank this is a dry sump engine so it doesn't hold oil inside the block so we do need to make a oil tank a gas tank the exhaust will be on there the radiator so there'll be more weight added to this thing. So I really don't want to mess with the rear shocks too much right now because I want to wait till I get as much weight on it as possible. But I think everything turned out really good. Next episode, we'll mount the radiator, the exhaust, uh, we'll build the oil tank, get the pedals mounted up, and we'll probably adjust those front shocks to get this thing at least a front. Like we could drive it if the front was a little stiffer with the way the rear is. So uh, the thing's looking sick. So thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to check out the links in the video description. We're basically using affordable go-kart parts everywhere as we can on this. This is golf cart wheels, uh, go-kart shocks. We're using go-kart pedals, steering wheel uh, parts. Everything is really affordable to get a buggy like this. Now the only downside to this chassis, or not the chassis, the power plant, is it's a kickstart dirt bike engine. I really wish we had an ATV engine that was electric start with reverse. So probably later in the series, like after we ride this thing, before powder coat, I'm probably gonna slap a 700 Raptor engine on this. I feel like that would be the best setup for this. We can use the radiator that we're mounting for this engine. Uh, the engines are relatively really close in size, so 
we could fit it in there without any problems. I think that's going to be the best route. Let us know in the comment section what you think of this buggy. We're reading your comments. Make sure to check out those links. They help out a ton. Make sure to check out Centurial links. Uh, Centurial provided all the parts for this uh, other than what Go Power Sports provided. So they make some awesome tools. You can see it's using the magnetic tools. Uh, we don't use them once we get so far in the chassis like this, but when we're building chassis, Centurial tools are a must. I love their magnetic stuff. If you're new at tubing notching, I really think their tubing notching tools help out a ton. But yeah, we got to put the floor pan in this thing in the next episode. Got a lot left to do, but we're knocking it out uh, slowly but surely. And then the supercharged buggy is finally coming back in the shop. We're fixing a bunch of issues with it, and then we're sending it off to powder coat. So a lot of stuff happening in the next few weeks, guys. Thanks so much for watching. We love you guys, and God bless.